can't help being afraid. students, how are you? The brave and trustworthy ones have come back. Welcome to Professor Fred Hopkins Schlock Cinema 101. I'm your host and professor, Professor Fred. So delighted you could be here again today for another class. Igor, make sure all doors are locked. No one escapes. Today's film is the 1960 Roger Corman beatnik extravaganza Bucket of Blood. Starring Dick Miller, Bruno Vesota, Barbara Morris, and an extremely young Chuck Connors. So let's get to the overview of the plot of the 1960 Roger Corman film, Bucket of Blood. The plot, such as it is, concerns the exploits of Dick Miller playing Walter Paisley, a busboy in a sleazy, run-down, transient coffee house who wants to be a poet. He wants to be a sculptor. He wants to be anything beat, but he has no talent. He comes home late one night to find that his cat has gotten itself caught in the wall of his apartment. He takes a huge kitchen knife and tries to cut the cat out. Accidentally, he stabs the cat, pulls his knife out, and there is a cat with a knife in it. It's a horribly fakey cat, as you will see in the film. What Walter does then is covers the cat with putty and sculptor's clay. Then he brings it into his sleazy, transient, pathetic, discombobulated coffee house. And of course, they think he's a genius. Bruno Vesota, another well-known Roger Corman actor, plays an art dealer who wants to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for Walter's work, and a pathetic, discombobulated, pompous poet, pseudo-poet in the coffee house starts idolizing Walter Paisley. So, to meet the increased demand for his art, Walter has to come up with more and more figures to put clay over. He has no talent, so of course, he has to murder more and more people. And that's what gets him into trouble, as you'll see in the film. I don't want to give it all away, but in the next few minutes, watch for a scene where Walter's walking home and sees a real cool guy making out in a roadster. Don't blink or you'll miss seeing rifleman actor from the old TV show, Chuck Connors, as the guy who tells Walter to go away in the movie. So stay tuned for that. We do have a pop quiz, and that quiz, which I'm going to come back and grade you very severely on, will be this film, Bucket of Blood, was shot in a legendary three days by producer Roger Corman. Roger Corman shot this back to back with another three day film that came out the same year. That film is very, very famous and deals with a man-eating plant named Audrey Jr. Do your research, students. We're going to have a quiz on what the name of that film is. But for the moment, let's start the movie. Igor, roll em. I will talk to you of art, for there is nothing else to talk about, for there is nothing else. Life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on the omnibus of art. Burn gas buggies and whip your sour cream of circumstance and hope. And go ahead and sleep your bloody heads off. What is not creation is Graham Crack. The crumble to feed the creator. The artist is. All others are not. A canvas is a canvas. Or a paint. A rock is a rock. Or a statue. A sound 
is a sound or is music. A preacher is a preacher or an artist. Where are John, Joe, Jake, Jim, Jerk, Dead, Dead, Dead? They were not born before they were born. They were not born. Where are Leonardo, Rembrandt, Ludwig? Alive, alive, alive. They were born. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Fishes for liver oil to nourish the artist. Stretch their skins upon an easel to give him cancer. Crush their bones into a paint that he might hold them. Let them die. And by their miserable death become the clay within his hand that he might form an ashtray or an arm. All that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are blind fish swimming in the cave of aloneness. Swim on, you maudlin, muddling, maddened fool, and dream that one bright and sunny night, some artist will bait a hook and let you bite upon it. Bite hard and die. In his stomach, you are very close to immortality. Walter? Walter, what are you doing here? I was looking at Carla's picture. Why, I pay you to look at pictures. Oh, I get to work. I was just looking. There are empty cups all over the place. Clear them out. You shouldn't be so rough on him, Lenny. Okay, Walter. All right. <laughs> I think that's good. Yes, man. How you making? Fine, man. How about you? In the mouth. nails in, a couple of hustlers. One of them short, fat, brunette, named Skinny. The other one was short also. She was bleached. Skinny. Name of fat. Probably. I didn't get it. They didn't give any pictures, though. Guess you can keep an eye on. Okay. Any head? Well, Jerry Sachs looked like he was straight. I'm sure he's on it anyway. Didn't see any pushes around the place. Lou said he'd check out on Jerry. He'll sound him out later if he gets any higher. I guess it's about it. Okay, uh... Go on home and get a good night's sleep, you think. Okay, so long. Everyone listen to my new poem. I think they really heard it. I heard it, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Walter. I'm sure you did. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil to nourish the artist. <laughs> that was word for word. Yes, it? I've forgotten. You mean you don't remember your own poem? I refuse to say anything twice. Repetition is death. I don't get it. When you repeat something, you are reliving a moment, wasting it, severing it from the other end of your life. I believe only a new impression, a new stimuli, new life. I thought you believed that life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on a... I do believe that, Walter, but I also believe creative living. To be uncreative, you might as well be in your grave or in the army. They tried to draft me once. I couldn't pass the test. Walter? <laughs> Leonard's looking at you. He just by God. Walter has a clear mind. One day something will enter it, feel lonely, and leave again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Cats, yes. If you want to know how beatniks live, William and me will show you. We'll introduce you to some wild one. 
You may even discover an artist of your own. And how much is that going to cost? What cost? A couple of bucks. You want to meet some beatniks, don't you? Oh, no, it's the artist. I'm just crazy about artists. All that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are just blind fish swimming in a cave of aloneness. Oh, you must be an artist. And working as a fuss boy, too. Feed him that he will be satisfied. The artist is. All others are not. That's most intriguing. Are you a painter? Well, well no, I, I work... Uh, I'm working on something that's not ready yet. What is it, man? Finger painting? Hey, draw me a picture of a house, Walter. Make some smoke coming out of his chimney. Well, I am working on something. I'll show you soon. Walter? I can fix myself something. Besides, I got something important to do. Oh, oh, say, Walter, did you see anything of Frankie tonight when you went out? I didn't see him at all. But what would you do? Tell him I got a nice, fresh piece of halibut for him. Tell him that? I mean, do you think he'll understand? He's only a cat. Oh. Good night, Walter.
getting out of Frankie. How'd you get yourself stuck in a wall? Wait a minute, I'll get you out.
What's the matter? You losing? How do you like my cat? You make this thing mad? Uh huh. It's crazy. Crazy. You wanna buy it? For me, Matt? I'm tapped. My cat, get to work. Hey, hey, Waller, come here a minute. Hey, congratulations, man. Walter, you're famous. I saw your cat. Did you like it, Mr. Brock? You may call me Maxwell. So, so how'd you do it, Walter? All right. Just put some clay and fix it up. <laughs> Attention. Attention, everyone. As you pass through these yellow portals, I am sure you noticed on your right a small clay figure. And assume this transfixed effigy to be the work of a master sculptor. And indeed, so it is. That master sculptor is in our midst. He is none other than Walter Paisley, our very own busboy whose hands of genius have been carrying away the empty cups of your frustration. Mark well this lad. His is the silent voice of creation. But in the dark, rich soil of humility, he blossoms as the hope of our nearly sterile century. Uh, beautiful, beautiful Maxwell. Bring me an espresso, Walter. That's Maxwell, really beautiful. Thank you. Man, you are in. Oh, Walter, it was yes, wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. This is my man, Mr. Yes, yes. This is my man, you got a pen? Huh? Hey, Pops, what's happening? Making a big scene for Walter. Who'd he shoot? He made a cat. Out of clay. You're out. Yeah, later. Did you hear them, Mr. DeSantis? They all like my cat. Yeah, very good. Now look, Walter, you must be tired. Why don't you take the rest of the night off? Oh, I don't no, 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 you got to come in. Besides, you're creating an incident. When people are applauding, they don't know to cross me. So go on home and work on something. Make another cat. Well, I haven't got another cat. Just go to the movies. Please, Walter, go. All right, Mr. DeSantis. Good night. Good night, Walter. Walter? Walter, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Mayolia. Walter, I dug it. My cat? It was the most wonderful, wildest, like, wiggiest thing I've ever seen. Walter, you've done something to me. Something deep down inside of my piranha. I have? Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. You're creative. You've got a hot light bulb glowing inside of you. And I want to be warm by it. Gee, that's nice of you, Naolia. Walter, take me away from here. Take me away to some cool blue place. Gas. I can't. I gotta go home. Oh, then I'll go home with you. Oh, no, Mrs. Wicked wouldn't like that. She's my landlady. Isn't there anything I can do for you? I don't think so, Naolia. Oh, Walter, I can't let you just split like this. I've got to do something. I've got to contribute. You don't have to do anything. Wait. Wait, there is one thing I can do. One little thing. Don't leave, Walter. I want to give you something. Something that'll make you remember me. Put it in your pocket. Now go, Walter. Don't look back. Go.
have your autograph, Mr. Paisley? Why, certainly, my good woman. Everybody likes my cat. You want to buy my statue, mister? Ten thousand dollars? Okay. Gee, I'll be famous. And then I can ask Carla and she'll say yes. I know she will. down the yellow door plenty. Come on in. Uh, I was just making some pancakes. You can have some if you like. Did you see my cat? Yeah, I saw your cat. I also saw that chick ladies on you. Oh, that was Mayolia. She's a nice girl. She's kind of strange, though. I guess she figures I get headaches or something. Okay, Walter, who's your connection? Connection? Yeah, connection. Who do you score from? Where do you buy your horse? Horse? Horse, junk, white stuff, heroin. Is that what that is? i never seen any of that before. I always thought that was expensive. Yeah, Walter, that can be real expensive. Gee, well, wasn't that nice in Mayoli to give me that expensive horse? Walter. Huh? Police officer. Ooh, you're like an undercover man. You're under arrest, Walter. Under arrest for what? Possession of narcotics. For me? What are you talking about? Walter, I got you cold. Now, you just come along quietly. I didn't do nothing. And they only had give me those. I didn't ask for it. Oh, I didn't even know what was in there. All right, you can tell them that downtown. Now, let's go. I ain't going no place with you. Walter, do I have to point this at you? You're going to shoot me. No, don't shoot Walter, me. Walter, just relax. No, you're going to shoot now, me. Just relax. No, don't shoot just me. shut up, Walter. No, you're going to shoot me. Don't shoot me. <laughs> been talking to yourself again. Well, I, I guess maybe I have, Mrs. Swicket. Somebody's got to. Walter, you know, what you need is a girl. But she doesn't have to be pretty. Just so long as she takes good care of you. Well, I can take real good care of myself, Mrs. Swicket. Yeah, I can see that. Look at this pad. Terrible. What did you ever clean it up? And where did you change these sheets last? They look like they're alive. A mess, Wicked. I gotta meet some friends in a little while, and I gotta take a shower. Well, well, no, why don't you clean up your mind? Oh, please, What's no, the matter? midnight. Lou had already been gone over an hour. No, nobody seems to know where he went. Why don't you put an alert out on him and I'll check on him from here. Okay, right.
dark complexion, hair black and curly. Last seen wearing blue jeans and gray sweaters. Eleven was a murderer, all in his prison cell. And those who read about his crimes lay damned his soul to hell. Saying, go down, you murderer, go down. For the murder of his own true wife and the killing of his own child, the jury found him guilty and the hanging judge he smiled. And dig the fuzz. They didn't the fuzz they wanted. You, man, you. Hey, maybe they're looking for old Walter. He's a criminal type. Ain't you, Walter? Oh, sorry, Mr. Descent. Oh, that's all right, Walter. Sit down. You mean? Sit down. Greetings, man. I'm not supposed to sit with the customers. Wait. Now, why shouldn't you sit at the table, Walter? After all, you're a big artist now. A true creator of Bob's Mill Motors. What's the big idea? Idea? I was just telling Walter the truth. Man wanted to pay me $100 for the cat. In fact, he's taking it home to show to his wife. Proves that I underestimated Walter's ability. His work? There's enormous realism. You can hardly tell it from the real thing. Well, that sounds like a real put down. Get off Walter's back, Leonard. Why on his back? They're not very funny. I'm not trying to say. Walter, what are you going to make next? A dog, maybe. Or a bird. How about a few dozen cockroaches from your room? Hey, man, why don't you make an elephant? I, I got a new one. Great. What is it? It's a full-length life-size figure. Crazy. What is it called? Uh, murdered man. When do we get to see it? Oh, any time. Hey, that's a pretty far-out name for a statue. I saw a statue once. It was called The Third Time Phyllis Saw Me, She Exploded. And what kind of a statue was that? I don't know. It was made out of driftwood and dipped in fluoric acid. It's very wild. <laughs> What's wrong, Leonard? Nothing. Nothing at all. The food in this dump. Oh, man, you should try the sorrel sewer. They got wheat germ bagel. Too much. Uh, excuse me, please. I think he really is sick. So who isn't? Tavis! Well, I've been trying to get you all evening. You gotta make a call. Gotta call Lieutenant Belvedere. Listen, I was wrong about my wife. She wants that cat after all. Do you hear me? I'll give you that hundred dollars for the cat. I can't talk to you just now. All right, then two hundred. No. No! $300 and that's top. $300 for the cat? <laughs> I know I'm going out of my mind, but I've been collecting art pieces all over Europe for years. And this boy, Walter Paisley, has got it. I want to buy his first work. And to make very sure that I get it, I'll pay you $500. $500 for the cat and the first look at his next stop. Just now, but I'll have him back in a few days. Then you can have it for the five hundred dollars. Oh, thank you, sir. I think I've made a bargain. Call me when you're ready. Good night. Larry, you feel better? Listen, I'm going over to Walter's later after the place closes to see murdered man. You feel up to coming along? The rope was fixed around the neck and a watcher behind his ear. And the prison bell was tolling, but Jim Evans didn't hear. Saying, go down, you murderer, go down. Look at the size of it. Well, it's not really that big. I got it on kind of a stamp. Let's see it. I'm a little nervous. I never did a person before. You can do anything if you set your mind to it. It's hard here. You want me to open a window? Oh, come on, Walter. Take off the sheet. <laughs>
Don't you like it? Walter, it's a masterpiece. I've never seen anything like it before. And I hope I never see anything like it again. Neither do I. Idiot. And it's eloquent. It expresses modern man and all his self-pity. How did you ever find that in yourself, Walter? Well, it, it wasn't easy. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing at all. I've never seen anyone so squeamish. What's your opinion, Leonard? Don't ask me. Oh, come on. Now, even you must see its value. You think that you or I could have conceived of such a thing, much less executed it? Well, then admit it. It's a work of genius. I admit it. Let's take it down to the yellow door. No. Why not? I'll tell you. Will you cover it up again, please, huh? Please. all this nonsense. Why do you want to hide it? Well, I've been thinking. I, I didn't realize how much talent Walter actually had. It would be wrong to show his pieces one at a time. Dead wrong. You're right. He should build a collection first. Yes. Yes. That's the idea. Maybe when it's big enough, we can have a show. A show? Yeah. Uh, just for me? No. Well, not exactly. I mean, you, you take years and years. It's getting hot again. Well, it would take you years to make that many statues. But your work would be featured. It's a wonderful idea, Walter. It's the only way to gain recognition. All the big art critics and art dealers will be there. It'll be an event. Yes, then we can unload and sell this stuff for a lot more. Uh, the show, uh, how soon can we go? Well, don't rush things, it takes time. But first of all, you've got to stop making these horrible statues. Carla and I will guide you. Maybe you can turn to freeform. Freeform? Well, that's the movement today. With your talent to realism? But you can see the direction is really some cakes. I'm healthy. But, but you said I was a genius. Now, I don't want to be a busboy anymore. Yes, maybe you've got a point there. You shouldn't keep working at the yellow door. But... I'm sure that man is going to buy you a dead cat. So, here, here's your fee in advance. Fifty dollars. And if you need more, I've got it, so don't worry. I've got great faith in you, Walter. Gee, fifty dollars for something I made. Now you're a professional. Let's go. Okay. Good night, Walter. Keep up the good work. Yeah, but don't rush things. you got all the time in the world. Come on, Carl. Good night. You are, Walter? I'm an artist, Mrs. Circus. Yeah. Oh, sure you are, Walter. I am. Look. One of the greatest advances in modern poetry is the elimination of clarity. I am proud to say my poetry is only understood by that minority which is aware. Aware of what? Why not of anything stupid, just aware? Man, this place is beginning to feel like a lineup. Yeah, baby. If it don't cool out pretty soon, I'm gonna want somebody else to join. We may have to start drinking. My zen stick. Well, you me. Bring me a cappuccino and a piece of papaya cheesecake and, and a bottle of Yugoslavian white wine. Yes, sir, Mr. Paisley. Good evening, Walter. Maxwell, how have you been? 
I see the rewards of achievement have come your way. Well, after all, I'm a successful sculptor now. Indeed. Hey, man, dig Walter the Wigger. Come around like you just cured cats? What a slick to see. Crazy. I was just suggesting to Walter that he try his hand at free form. Why do you suggest anything to Walter? Are you the spokesman for society come to put your stifling finger in his eye? Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, now, who invited these two down from the crowd? Maxwell, you who? Through the table, bring a bowl. I may be sick. It's Alice the Awful. Comes to spread cheer and the color. Look at my sun tan, everybody. Do we have to? Where have you been, Alice? I went up to Big Sur to look for Henry Miller. You didn't find him, I hope. No, he's in Europe. Good. Why is the bus boy sitting here? I'm not the bus boy anymore. That's right. Walter has become a sculptor. Oh, really? I'm a model, you know. I only charge $25 an hour. Would you like to do me? I just might. Never mind that. Walter's going to try free form. There you go again. I may take my business to the sorrow sewer. As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest to Walter that he try a female figure. As a change from the violent death thing. You really should, Walter. You know what? If you like, I'll... I couldn't. Not you. Man, if you're going to be an artist, you've got to do news. News. Right, right, right. Ain't nobody an artist unless he does news. Will you get them out of here before we wind up in night court? Oh, let's change the subject. I'm sick of hearing about sculpture. Nobody knows how to do that anymore. Much less the busboy from the yellow door. Who, who do you think you're talking about? Don't shout at me. I don't like you. <laughs> Somebody asked for your opinion, Walter. You're just a simple little farm boy, and the rest of us are all sophisticated beatniks. That's all, man. Let's split. Yeah, man. I gotta make me some air. See, you, you make them leave. What did I do? The first beneficial service of your benighted life. It proves we're all good for something. Are you saying that this best boy is better than I? Yes. I think this whole bit about him being a sculptor is just a big put on for my benefit. That's not true. I am a sculptor. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Make something out of this. There. Hand. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't a real hand. If you were a sculptor, you'd create something for me. A <laughs> harpoon would be very nice. I'm going home. You're Apologize for being nasty to you this evening. So you apologize. Good night. <laughs> Listen, Twerp, why don't you get out of here and let me go to bed? I didn't finish talking to you. I decided to make that female figure after all. Oh? I'd like you to pose for it. Remember what I said about my price? $25 an hour. If you want to pay it, I don't mind posing. When do you want to start work? Tonight. You mean right now? Uh-huh. Wait till I get my sweater. heat around this 
clay. It's bad for the clay. You'll get used to it. Well, I'm almost ready. Here. Sit in this chair and I'll pose you. Very much clay. Oh, it's enough. Put this around your neck. I'm going to give a party tonight at the Yellow Door, in your honor, and I shall compose a poem. in an orgy of togetherness. The highway of life cuts sharply through the shady ghettos and the ivy-covered tombs, and laughter rings from every time capsule in the star-spangled firmament. And in the deep freeze, it is the children's hour, and no one knows that Duncan is murdered, and no one knows that Walter Paisley is born. Duncan knows, Tuesday sunrise knows, Alley cats and garbage cans and steaming pavement and you and I and the nude descending the staircase and all such things with oh we know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton gong, strike silken cymbals, play leathern flute, the cats and cans and you and I and all such things with oh we shall hear Walter Paisley is born. And the soul become flesh. Walter Paisley is born. Marvelous, darling, marvelous. Mom, my 
Like that was the greatest gas I ever heard. Crazy, what did he say? Didn't you hear him? No, man, I'm too far out. Maxwell, that was magnificent. I feel so elegant. Walter deserved every word of it. Makes me so glad I'm aware. Did you hear what he said? Yes, sir. All about me. It's true, isn't it? Every word. Yeah, like cool, man, like the most, like, yeah, daddy oh, cool, cool, like I'm a sculpture, man. Hey, I hope everyone's enjoying the film as much as I am, and I hope you're taking copious notes. One thing to just sum up the film is that we've now seen Walter do several murders, but you know, because he really isn't a talented sculptor at all and he needs the bodies to put clay over, but I, I have a couple of questions. Where is he getting so much clay? because in the, the only scene in the movie we see is just got a little bitty box of it to cover like whole human bodies. And, but, but more importantly, why does Naolia, the beatnik chick in the movie, give Walter drugs anyway? What is the point of that? Um, in the scene, she gives him the drugs, which look like some kind of weird bottle of polywogs or something, and says, this will make you never forget me. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, did anybody think about that when the movie was being made? I don't know. Anyway, um, let's answer the first pop quiz that we had. And in that pop quiz, I asked you what other film was made back to back with Bucket of Blood. Bucket of Blood took three days to film. This other film took even less. It also starred Jack Nicholson. That film was, of course, Little Shop of Horrors, featuring the man and woman eating plant, Audrey Jr. Also featuring Jackie Joseph and Jonathan Hayes and many, many other Corman regulars. So those are two, that, that's quite a, quite a good outfit for Roger Corman for uh, two six-day films. So anyway, to give you an overview of the movie, let's just, let's just go over the whole way that, that Hollywood has treated beatniks. If you figure the beatnik movement was started in the early 1950s by author poets Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg and was basically a literary movement concerned with protesting conformity and idealism in prosperous post-World War II America, how did it wind up being treated so discombobulatedly in Hollywood movies? Well, there are several answers to that. Number one, Hollywood came to the beatnik phenomenon too late. Whoop. Hollywood didn't even make the first beatnik movies till the early 1960s. By that time, the whole movement had intellectually run out of steam. Secondly, Hollywood didn't want to deal with poetry, didn't want to deal with, with people seriously questioning conformity in America. That's not going to sell popcorn. They wanted to portray beatniks as druggies, car thieves, and murderers, because that made sense, and that sold movie tickets. And that's how Bucket of Blood portrays the beatniks in this movie. Either they're, they're murderers like Walter, they're junkies like Naolia, or they're just pompous, discombobulated windbags like the, the main bearded poet who keeps spouting on with pretentious drivel throughout the whole movie. So, Hollywood missed the boat, but nonetheless, the movies are fun. We'll get back to you when the movie's over. Igor, roll them. of food and drink to satisfy anyone and everyone. You'll find something to please you to add to your evening's enjoyment. Something to please all tastes and age groups. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
It's four minutes till showtime. Hello? the secrets of the unknown. He's the man. Is he, Charles? Yes, he is. You call that thing a man? On this mystery island in the Pacific, three people are trapped in a new dimension of horror. The New York doctor who gave up his Park Avenue practice to prove himself either a madman or a genius. His wife, tormented by unsatisfied desire, desperate to escape her loneliness and her fear. The intruder, he knew that the forbidden secrets he uncovered were against the laws of nature. I shall succeed in creating a higher, a perfect man. Warning, the scene so shocking that a special warning bell has been installed to protect the faint-hearted. When the bell rings, we suggest they close their eyes and not open them until it rings again. Hi. You hungry? Looking for a tempting treat? Hold on till I absorb some heat. Some added tang might please you too. I'll slide into an oven fresh bun. And I'm ready for your eating fun. Why don't you try a juicy, good hot dog? Mmm, delicious. Show starts in two minutes. Symbols. We're all familiar with them. There are shortcuts to vital information. That's why, to familiarize you with the movie rating symbols which will be used by this theater, we present the following guide for parents and young people. It is designed to inform parents about the suitability of movie content for viewing by their children. G, all ages admitted, general audiences. GP, all ages admitted, parental guidance suggested. R, restricted, under 17 requires accompanying parent or adult guardian. X, no one under 17 admitted. Sizzling hot dogs, bursting with juicy goodness. Show starts in one minute. You're watching SCC TV, Seattle Community College's television. about time to focus on you. You can earn your degree online or on TV through distance learning at the Seattle Community Colleges. Study on your schedule. Want to learn more? Register by phone or online. Check out our website at www.seattlecolleges.com or call now 1-888-801-3600. And you know, your degree is closer than you think. You better hold off on the bubbly artist. You know why? You might talk too much. <laughs> what would I say? Most anything I expect. Are you two trying to ignore the rest of us? Oh, not me, Maxwell. I wouldn't ignore you. I know what it is to be ignored. Tell us what you're going to do next, Walter. I'm going to make the most wonderful, wildest, wittiest things you've ever seen. I'm going to make big statues and little statues, tall statues and short statues. I'm going to make statues of nobodies and statues of famous people. 
dispatches of actors and, and poets and people who sell things on television and a statue of a mayor and some opera singers and their intimate friends and everybody will say, Walter, let me shake your hand. It's been a real pleasure to have known you. <laughs> Alley cats and garbage cans, they know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton guns, striped silk and symbols, play leather words. <laughs> Tell us what you're going to do next, Walter. I'm going to make big statues, little statues, movie stars and poets, and guys who sell things on television. And the mayor and some officers. What you gonna do next, Walter? What am I gonna do next? What am I gonna do next? I gotta do something before they forget. I know what it's like to be ignored. Bumming a ride on the omnibus of art. Huh? What'd you say? Well, it's not creation, it's graham crack. Let them all crumble to feed the create. Now, oh, beta, you must be nuts. Physically attracted to her? No, man, he ain't the type. He don't get enough vitamin E. 
Maxwell gave him a bottle of wheat germ oil once. Maybe he just started taking it. What did you want to talk to me about, Walter? Well, uh, what kind of people do you like, Carla? Oh, thinking people. Artistic people, I guess. You think I'm artistic? Of course I do. That means you like me. I like you very much, Walter. I, I, I thought you did. I can't how you kissed me the other night. Oh, that was for your sculptor of the girl. You're nude in the chair. Carla, uh, uh, I, I've been alone for a long time, and, and I know you've been alone, because you never seem to go out with anybody, even though Leonard's always asking you to go out with him, and I just... What are you trying to say? Carla, I, I, I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married to you. How long have you been thinking about this, Walter? Oh, for, for a long time. Ever since you first came to work at the club. You were the only one who was ever nice to me. I didn't know you loved me until you kissed me. Walter, I do like you. And I did kiss you. But that was because of your work. There's more to being in love with someone than just that. You mean you don't love me? I'm afraid that's what I mean. But... But you gotta love me. Why do you think I made that statue of Alice? Walter, I'm sorry. You I... just can't be sorry. I want to marry you. Now calm down, Walter, and let's go in there and and then maybe when the show's over we can talk about it. Well, I want to talk about it. I get it. I see the whole thing now. Nobody knows that Walter Paisley is born. Carla. Will you do one favor for me? Just about anything, Walter. Would you let me make a statue of you? Would you really like to? That'd make me very happy. Okay. Tonight. I'll make a statue of you tonight. Okay? Come on. about, but no craftsman. This man knows his anatomy. I'd give 1500 for this. After you read my review, it'll probably cost you 5000 <laughs> So what's the trouble? Why should you be so depressed? Have you heard the things they're saying? You can make 25000 on these pieces alone. I thought you put money down. I do, but 25000 Leave me alone. Come to make this scene. Got some cappuccino, man. We got the bread. We're not open for business. This is an art exhibit. No bumps. Get up. Yes, that art is a bum, man. And yeah, he's sober. Yeah, well, that's his problem. All right, man. All right, we'll wait outside. Yeah, you wait outside. Carla? What's the matter? 
There's a body inside that statue. Oh, well, that's ours. It's all right, Carla. Maxwell says it's all right. Let them become clay in his hands that he might mold them. Walter, you stay away from me. Don't you see, Carla? I made them immortal. Don't you see? I can do the same for you. <laughs> Find me. 
Was that a marvelously discombobulatedly delightful, incredibly aromatically awesome film presentation or what? It really doesn't get any better than that. The 1960 Roger Corman film, Bucket of Blood, starring Dick Miller, Barbara Morris, Bruno Vesota, and a very young Chuck Connors. Just to kind of wrap up the whole idea of Bucket of Blood is it is basically set in the beatnik milieu. Unfortunately, by 1960, the beatnik movement, as originally started by authors and poets Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg, was pretty much out of steam. Hollywood always jumped onto trends way too late. Sadly, the people in Hollywood, people like Roger Corman, great director and producer that he is, didn't really want to deal with the thematic ideas of the beat generation, which were questioning conformity and, and American ideals and the American dream and the post-World War II prosperity of this country. What, what Hollywood wanted to do was portray beatniks basically as junkies, car thieves, or murderers. And that's basically what they're portrayed at in this film. Again, it's a fantastic movie. I believe it's one of Dick Miller's finest roles. Dick Miller will be primarily familiar to modern audiences for small roles in such marvelous Joe Dante films as Gremlins, along also with uh, his Little Shop of Horror co-stars Jackie Joseph and Jonathan Hayes. They're also in that. But the idea of Bucket of Blood and the fact that this film could have been shot in a legendary three days is still discombobulatingly mahoganized, varnished, and is incredible. Uh, one thing to watch for, or maybe you, maybe you did notice that when Walter Paisley went to what appears to be a sawmill in the middle of a city, I don't know what a sawmill's doing there, but comes up to the sawmill operator and pushes his head towards the buzzsaw. I don't know if anybody noticed, but the buzzsaw never got turned on. You hear all this noise, but the buzzsaw is not moving. But hey, that's the magic of Roger Corman and B-movies and Professor Fred's Movie Marvels, Schlock Cinema 101. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Igor, please collect all the papers. Unlock the doors. We are done with Professor Fred's Movie Marvels. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Use your own door.